Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to another Unity 3D tutorial and continuing our mesh creation we now have to talk about UV texture mapping and I've gone to trusty Google and I've found some generic clip art of someone wrapping a present and what do the two have in common? Well, when you have a texture and which in, in 3D terms is simply an image, right? You have to somehow get this flat texture onto a shape that might be all kinds of weird kind of shapes. It might be a box, it might be a character, right? Think about your, your, your favorite sort of humanoid character in a 3D first person type of game, right? This is a relatively complex shape. So you've got arms, you've got heads, you've got noses, you've got necks, little crevices, nooks and crannies all over the place. And somehow you're taking a flat two dimensional image and wrapping that around the, your, your 3D model in a certain way to make it so that when you have where you have drawn the eye in you know in your paint program it actually shows up on the model where the eye should be and that is all done using uv mapping another piece of clip art that i picked up that might be helpful to think about is the classic sort of unwrapped box type thing so this is your 3d box but you could envision unwrapping this box to something like this so if you want to texture box for example if we we're making a 3d image of a standard a standard six-sided die right some dice well, what you would do is you would model a cube and then you would go into your, your painting program and you would lay things out kind of like this and then you would put one dot here and on the opposite face over here you would put six dots and then three and four and two and five and then you would tell your 3D program listen here's my image and here's how I want each one of these coordinates in the image to be applied to each face and that is something called UV mapping so you can imagine that this image over here on the right, um, again, we'll, we'll think about it in terms of percentages, or rather a number from zero, which is the top left corner, to one in the bottom right. It, it may be the opposite way, but zero, zero might be down here and the one might be up here, but it doesn't really matter, right? So, and then in our coordinates, um, so let's say it's about this wide, so at one third of the way here, so in the x direction, it's at 0.3, so this corner here would be 0.3x, and 0y would be this corner right here. And then this corner down here would be 0.3x and 0.25y, right? A quarter of the way down the image would be 0.25. So we've got a third of the way this way and a quarter of the way this way. So this coordinate would be mapped to 0.33, 0.25. This corner here would be mapped to 0.66, 0. And this corner down at the bottom would be 0.66 and then 0.25 in the Y. And then you would repeat that for every single point on this image. Now, most 3D modeling programs have certain tools to help you do this um, in a kind of a non-tedious, non-manual kind of way, but th that's what happens. In fact, usually what happens is you go the other way around. You create your model and then you use a tool in your 3D program to unwrap the model to something like this and then you export this image to your painting program and then you paint over the image and then you just take this the newly updated image, put it back in your 3D modeling, which has already unwrapped your coordinates from this to that, and so your image just gets applied to the right place. And that's usually the way that you actually do it. Um, now, we don't quite have the luxury of doing that right now because we are manually creating that, but we do have to tell the program what the heck the coordinates are because right now, we've just got a block square because basically every coordinate here is just set to like zero 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 everything is zeros and it so happens that in our image the the zero zero point in our image is just a black pixel right if the top left pixel or again bottom left or top right or where, wherever the hell it actually maps to if that were a an orange pixel like even if everything else looked the same but we had that one pixel being orange then this whole thing would be orange so we have to tell it which coordinate on our image each one of these corner these corners map to and it's not hard but it's it, it's not obvious to think about you just get confused right away so in our mesh we already know that we have vertices and we have triangles well mesh also has something called uv and the uv coordinates are what your your texture mapping is and why is it called uv well that's because it's you can think of it as kind of x and y coordinates okay x and y except x and y has a specific connotation in in 3d space right x is kind of left and right and y is up and down and z is backwards and forwards 
So it's called UV in a map because it doesn't map to physical coordinates. It's on some sort of like virtual 2D image that we're, we're pulling from. But you can think of them as X and Y if it makes life easier and it sure as hell makes life easier for me. So our UV coordinates are a series of, of X and Y points, right? And only two coordinates, which means we can define it. And in fact, if we check, if we go to um, mesh.uv, you wait for the tooltip to come up, you can see that it's an array of vector twos. All right, we can, we can live with that, two dimensional vectors. So vector two array, and we'll call this UV, is equal to, and again, we're gonna populate this. And how many of these vectors do we need? Well, we need a vector for, we need a UV coordinate for every vertice in our object. Okay, so we're gonna need four of them. So we're gonna go new vector two, and we'll just, we'll start at zero, zero. We'll get four of them. All right, and then we'll feed in some coordinates. Now again, part of the problem, uh, we need a semicolon. Part of the problem is that here it refers to it as x, y, and here it's, it's uv, but you know, we'll, we'll deal with it. Um, so what are the coordinates going to be? Well, I mean, logically we've got, so top left, and this is over to the right, so the right is in the x, so we're gonna do that. And then the next one is gonna be a one, one. So basically we're copying the x and z coordinates from over here, and we're gonna do that. So that might work. We'll find out. Mesh.uv equal our UV. All right. So, and you can see, you got the error here. You notice it says shader wants texture coordinates, but the mesh doesn't have them. It also wants normals. We'll talk about normals in a bit. Um, and that's why our, our, everything was coming up black. You do get a, a notice about it as to why things aren't working properly. So we'll hit play and then we'll click. And yeah, look at that. It, wow, it actually looks like it worked. Um, we'll see what happens when we start kind of growing the object, but uh, yeah, that, that, that looks pretty good. So now we have a road texture on there. But why is it so dark? I mean, the white lines here should be brilliant white, but just like the background, why are they not white? And why am I still getting an error in here called shader wants normals? What the hell is a normal? All right, so, and again, now we're getting, it's, it's a little bit of a complicated topic, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. The 3D engine doesn't actually know sort of what, I don't know, the flatness or roundness of an object. Like, um, this would be a lot easier to explain in Blender. Maybe I'll load up Blender. Um, I mean, there, there's, there's a few things to talk about, but let's, let's just as a quick example, let's, uh, let's create a, an icosphere. All right, so in our icosphere, you can see this is a sphere, but you can clearly see each face of it as being flat, right? And we know that spheres aren't actually round, and we can, we can compare that to the basic sphere that we were getting in, in Unity here. We know it's not round, it's made up of triangles, but I mean, it looks, especially if we unselect it, I mean, it looks pretty roundish, right? It's smooth. Everything is smooth here as opposed to this sort of thing which looks more like a cut gem. Well, why is one smooth and one not? And it comes down mostly to normals. There's, there's a whole other thing with split edges and whatever. We won't get into that. Um, it mostly comes down to normals because on each one of these vertices, vertices in this mesh for each triangle, the normals are pointing straight up. Straight up and flat and sort of orthogonal to the... Um, to the flatness of the surface, right? They come out at 90 degrees. Um, you can think of it, look at, look at our little 3D widget here. You can think of the flat surface as being the, the green and red, and the normal comes straight out of the top because it defines the sort of flatness of the object. Whereas if I, and I can actually show the normals here, right, at each vertice. So you can see that each vertice, it's going straight. No, this is actually a terrible example. Actually a terrible example. Um, well, that's unfortunate. Actually, oh, that's why, because, there we go. So the normals come out straight from the surface, right? The surface normals. Blender and the way the normals work in Blender is different from how they work in Unity, so it's not necessarily the best example, but that, that's the normal. Whereas in a round cube, so this is when you have a flat object, but when you have a round cube, the normals instead are going to be more like these normals. Um, and if I tell this 
to be smooth because technically if we brought this into Unity, this would actually be a smooth object. So it's much more accurate. There we go. So smooth shading. So right, if I pop out of it now, I mean, you can still see the edges here, but the rest of it is, is a lot smoother. And especially if I went and did a, uh, if I subdivided this, right now, yeah, all right, that's, that's looking pretty roundish and smoothish and, and not too bad. Um, and now what's really happening is that at each corner, the normals are still coming like straight out from the surface, um, but it's at each corner and they're splayed out ever so slightly. If I undo that, it's really hard to tell. You can just barely tell that this one here, it's coming out straight from where the sort of point meet, but it's not straight, it's not a 90 degree angle with the surface of the actual triangle. And you can tell if you look at this one, and you look at this one, they come out at slightly different angles. They sort of spread out from each other, right? Almost, almost defining a cone. Like, oops, if you were to, if you were to follow them out, one would, you know, one kind of goes like this, and this one kind of goes like this. So they're kind of forming this kind of cone, and that's what the normals are. And that's how you make a smooth object by having the normals kind of work that way. And a flat object is by having the normals go um, parallel to the the actual surface of the triangle. Um, and yeah, there's a split edges thing, but we won't talk about that. No one wants to hear about that today. All right, let me get rid of this sphere. So, so the problem with our lighting model here is because the normals, which right now are all, I don't know, I guess set to zero, 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 the 3D engine doesn't understand the sort of flatness of the shape, whether it's supposed to be flat or rounded and in which direction, because it uses the normals to figure out how to bounce light off the object. And without valid normal data, the, the object is basically, it's basically acting as if it was unlit here. Um, it's probable that we could do something like rotate this light around in such a way that we might get a response. I don't know, there might be a way maybe in the X direction or something like that that we could mess with our directional light to actually get it to somehow shine on this. But the real solution is actually just to get some normals up in here. Now, the normals are a little, they're very uncomplicated to think about in our flat structure because every single one of the normals is going to point straight up, right? We're, we're flat this way, so all the normals are going to point exactly straight up. So we are going to, again, we've got mesh.normals which is a series of vector threes. It's an array of vector threes, um, which, which is great. We can work with that. So we're going to go and make a vector three. We're going to call this normals equals something of some kind. We're going to assign it over here. And then um, we can use the, uh, the shortcut vector three dot up, right? We can just use that. And we're going to feed it four up vectors for our normals. So, um, so this is where like the 3D creation starts to become very complicated if you've got complex shape with curves and straights and all these kinds of things because you have to figure out the correct orientation of the normals and God forbid the UVs. But now if we do this and we click, now our road is brilliantly lit. It's just as bright as the surface down here. It's exactly the way it's supposed to and we've eliminated all the errors in the console. Um, there is one extra thing. If for some reason, if in your material, whoops, you use a bump mapped version. So if you used a bump diffuse and we hit play here, we will get one extra error message in that it wants tangents. We're not going to look at that. Um, but the tangents, like normals are used to define sort of how the lighting works. Uh, even though you normally you call this a normal map, that would be your bump map. It, it uses a combination of normals and tangents and, and things like that to determine how to play with the lighting when you've got an object that looks kind of bumpy. And the, the tangents aren't actually hard to do, but they're not relevant to this. So I'm going to leave them out just to leave this a little simpler. Um, but there we go. So no, no errors at all. And I can keep clicking and get lots of roads and that's great. Um, but we would really like, because right now they're stacked on top of one another. I can, I can move one out of the way. I can show you. Ah, there it is. Um, but what we really want to do is respond to the mouse positioning in some fashion and use that to sort of draw our road properly. Um, and we're going to want a road that can vary in length, vary at angles, start and end in, uh, in positions defined entirely by us. So we'll look at that in the next video.